Kira team, we are going to have a look at how to make a crop charm gibbet. Uh, in particular, thinking about the little stem and button that we need to then put the crop charm on. So let's leap over to uh, Tinkercad. Alrighty, so the first thing we want to do is create a little button that's going to go on the very base. So to do that, I'm going to use a cylinder. So I'm going to drag it out onto my work plane. And I need to find out uh, what its measurements are. So I'll just look top left, uh, sorry, top right. And you can see I've got my cursor on the ruler tool, which I just brought out onto the workspace. And now it tells me what all the measurements are. So we've got this measurement here, 20, which is how wide the circle is. There's another 20, how deep the circle is. So basically we're saying 20 by 20. It's, um, it's radius is 20 millimetres. And then we've got another 20, and it's arrows going up and down. And if I just do that, we can see the height is 20 millimetres. Now, there's also the 6 by 6 here. Uh, that's just to do with placement. So you can see as I shift it around, I could get it right into the corner by changing those numbers to 0, 0. There we go. All right, but it's not a biggie. What we are interested in is changing the measurements. So to get uh, a base disc, we want it, I am thinking, probably 12 millimetres. So at the moment, you can see it's an egg. Uh, so I need to change that one too to 12. And we want to make it a little short and squat, two millimetres deep or high. And you can now see we've got a button. So that's cool. Now we need a stem. Now you can do this two different ways. We could either use another cylinder and we could make it uh, six millimeters high, six millimeters across the front, six, six millimeters across the back, and that'll give us a little cylinder that's six millimeters in diameter and six millimeters, I'll click on it, and six millimeters high. So this shows us the measurements. We want to put the cylinder on that disc. Oh, before I go on, I'll show you the other method or the other thing we could use for our stalk, and that's a cone. When I was looking at those uh, commercially made gibbets, uh, they looked like they used cones. So bringing that out, you can see it's got a pointy top. That's not going to be particularly helpful for us. We're going to cut it off. And over here, I'm looking at the measurements. Top radius is currently zero. Uh, if we change that to Three, you can see that the colour, and I'll change it so it's a bit easier to see. Uh, that colour, you can see the, the top's been cut off. All right, bring back my measurements. Um, we can see here that the base radius is 20 by 20. Now we are likely to have it sitting on this disc here, which is 12 by 12. So we don't want it 20 by 20. How about we go for Eight, eight millimetres in diameter. So change that twice. And then we'll do six millimetres high because we did the same with the cone. And there you go, you've got a little short shot, a uh, little short, um, uh, what are we calling it? Cut off cone. I'm just changing the top to four. Yeah, that looks better. Now, if we were going to put that on the base, we want to change it so it's upside down. So the, the, the smaller bit is going to go on top of the button. So clicking on it, and I'm looking at it. Oh, I'm, I'm now clicking onto the cube top left. Uh, we can see it brings one rotation axis. That's that little curved arrow. And as soon as I click on it, it shows me a compass. And if I wanted to click it, if I wanted to uh, have it changing on its head, at the moment it's standing upright. Uh, so a circle has 360 degrees. I want to rotate it half of that, 180. So I click on the numbers. I find that a lot easier. So 180, enter. And oops, let's see, that didn't work. Let's make it work. First, oh, one, eight, oh, enter. There we go, upside down. Cool. 
I am going to delete my little cylinder. I'm going to use the wee upside down cone. So the next thing we need to line them up. So I am going to I'm going to get rid of that measuring tool. And I'll click on that again. So that's disappeared. I'm going to use the align tool. So rather than eyeing it up, I'm going to select both of these. And then I'm going to the top right. And I have got my cursor at the moment on the align tool. So it's the line that's got two little rectangles out to the right. I'll click on that. And all of a sudden we get the sort of these dots that mean things. Now, I need to firstly uh, align these on this long axis. So if I click on that middle dot, they are now aligned on that long axis. And now I need to get them so that they're on top of each other. And I can, I can move my cursor on these wee dots and see what's going to happen. So I'm on the middle dot, and I'm going to click that. And then I'm going to click on top, so that's the cube, and you can see that's absolutely aligned. So that's cool. Now, my little um, cone, which we made six millimeters high, is actually sitting in, and if I'll make this bigger, so I'm using the plus, it's sitting in that little disc. So I've, I'm just clicking on the cone, and it brings up this other little cone, and I can pull it. Now, actually, I'm pulling both things up. And you can see that there's a number that's changing. If I click on that number and hit zero, it's going back onto the ground, which is what I want to do. So what I might do is take that out. And so I've mucked up my alignment, but I'll fix that up later. I'm going to lift this up two millimetres because that's how high this is. So I'll click on the cone. I've got my cursor on the little this little cone arrow. Now sometimes it's, you'll find it at the bottom, but what I do is I lift, 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 and I watch the number that's changing, and there it is here, and then I click on that number and I type in the number that I I know that I want it to be whatever height, in this case, two millimeters. There you go. Now I'm going to go back to my cube, top right. So I've got it clicked front. You can see very faded arrows there. I'm going to click so it's top and I'm going to select both again and use that align tool. So I'm going to say align them, enter across, align them so that they're on top of each other. If I click on that, uh, so it's just a little square, it's like a sighting bit for you to select shapes. Click on that, I'm looking directly down on it, and I can see it's absolutely centered. If I now click on the front, so we get front view, I can see that my two shapes are connected. I know they're all centered, I'm now going to select both of them, and I'm going to group them. Once I group them, they change the same color, and now I can move it around as a unit. Cool. Right, that's probably about enough for right now. I will be back.